Hey, welcome everybody. This is uh, this is gonna be a fun one. This is Johnny Mo, and I'm here with the Mod Squad. I'm with Nikki Klein and Cece Underwood and the Brittany Howard. And we're gonna the Brittany, and we're gonna be talking about um, something that I know people have asked me to talk about this, and uh, it's it, introverts and success, and how are some introverts successful? See, put, people often just assume introverts are shy. Right. While some parts may appear to be shy, it's more that introverts are not overly stimulated by crowds or conversation that really doesn't truly interest them. Verywellmind.com says it's like this. People who are introverted tend to be inward turning or focus more on intra internal thoughts, feelings, moods, rather than seeking out external stimulation. There's eight signs that you may be an introvert. Uh, being around lots of people drains your energy. Uh, you enjoy solitude, your own alone time, recharge. You have a small group of close friends. People often describe you as quiet and may find it difficult to get to know you. Sometimes, not all of these. Too much stimulation leaves you feeling distracted and unfocused. You're very self-aware. I know I am. Uh, you, are, you, you like to learn by watching. I do love to watch. Uh, you, you are drawn to jobs that involve independence where you can work on your own and well real estate is very independent in that respect if you research in the uh, introverts you may find that there are four types and to understand this is is to understand everything which is powerful in itself there's social introversion which prefers small groups and intimate envi intimate environments thinking uh, introversion where you uh, are thinking on your own when people are talking about the mundane you're off in your own little world anxious self-described I, I, I can put these at different places for different people that I know um, self-described you have anxiety about upcoming events uh, restraint or over analyzing a little bit are slow to make a decision but when you make a decision you're hundred percent committed for me, I prefer less conversation with, and have deeper conversation with substance versus mindless chit chat, uh, which found, you know, which typically is found in crowds and socialization. You're just talking about, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather sit down and have a deep conversation. Some famous introverts are Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Eleanor Roosevelt, Albert Einstein, Elton John, Lady Gaga, and if you can believe this one, Kim Kardashian. Today, we got the Mod Squad, who is our world-famous lab coat agents people that help monitor the group. This is just a three out of 30. And I want to <laughs> introduce Brittany Howe with Nikki Klein and CC Underwood. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Hello, hello. So we're yeah. going to jump right into this. We kind of have some pre, pre there's a whole bunch of us. And we, if we just go down a sidetrack, I'm okay with that too. But I'm going to open it up with this. From what I just opened up with, what do you connect with, agree with, or oppose? And I'm going to, I'm going to give the first question to Brittany. And I, 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 when she's done, I just want to add something, if she doesn't, that she has said in the past just recently. So, Brittany, take away. What do you, what do you think about um, introverts and success and those types of things? Can you connect with anything there? Um, yeah, when you said the anxiety about the upcoming events, I actually kind of giggled about that off <laughs> when everybody was watching. So Tristan made me speak and talk about my story, y'all. I think it took me, everybody who is my friend probably heard the speech many times because I was so anxious about it. I mean, I just posted last month, um, which was a year later, and I was in front of a camera like, I don't know how to do this. I, most people are probably most surprised because I'm so outgoing on camera, right? I'll speak on a stage, no big deal. You can't see anybody. But if you see me in person, you'll find me at a bar with a baseball cap kind of tucked down like, okay, nobody sees me, right? Like, I'm not, mm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I'm goofy. I'm, most people think that I would be, that I'm stuck up or standoffish. No, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> 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 Right. And then there's one thing I want to say um, that you had said before. You're an introvert until you have to be an extrovert and then you flip the switch. Right. Yeah, like uh, mm -hmm. what you're meeting today. I don't feel really well. Like so. But what you need today is this is Brittany. Yeah. Lights on. <laughs> right. And that's how mm -hmm. I am, too, man. Turn the lights on. Turn the camera on. Time to go. It's almost like it's almost like being a movie star. Right. Okay. Uh, or on on. Um, 
like Jimmy Kimmel or something like that. Commercial break, it's like, okay, okay, back on. Hey, I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we want to get into a conversation. There's a whole bunch of us, and you want me to be the funny guy? I, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'll just be right over here. Um, who's next? Nikki, so from all of that, is there anything that you can connect with or you can add on to from any of that? I mean, I think um, I would definitely consider myself an introvert, but when I'm, when I'm online, my social media, I'm definitely an extrovert because I get to hide behind my, my profile picture, yeah. uh, which I talk a lot about when I, when I teach. Um, mm -hmm. But now I'm extremely uncomfortable right now knowing that there are people watching us. I'm just going to hide. Like, that's, I figured I'd hide in my little square at the top and nobody will notice. <laughs> you can always just do this. <laughs> <laughs> but so whenever you... I, I was saying, that, like with Brittany, when she was saying, you know, when she goes to a bar or, or wherever, to, out somewhere social and she goes and hides, I'm always in the corner, but then this, people recognize my hair, so they come over to me. I'm like, oh, okay. So, the, yeah. the hair is world yeah, very, famous. Very recognizable. So I get people all the time and I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I'm definitely one of those people that prefers small and intimate versus big party. And you know what? You mm -hmm. just hit on something and I'm re I'm, I got this big project that's going on and everything else like that. And it comes to a lot where we're doing a lot of researching on video and posting and social media and all this other stuff. And what you said is very profound and we're finding the same thing that when you're making a video, uh, especially an edited video, live video is different because you're live, right? Everybody's got that anxiety that you're going to screw up. But when you make it an edited video, when you're doing a post or anything else like that, you're controlling the environment. So for introverts, it's really a great place to do it, right? It's almost a safe place because you're controlling that environment. Anyways, Cece, how about you? Anything that you can add to that? Anything you, you relate with? I mean, a, a lot of that to the same is that the switch I relate to a lot. And even on my team, people make fun of me. They're like, oh, Cece's in her video voice or she's in her phone voice or a TV voice. And I like, I have all these different personalities. I feel like, you know, when you talked about being self-aware, um, I'm very, very self-aware and also have a I feel like introverts likely have a high emotional intelligence because they are very observant they are able to see the other side of things they can see you know opposing views and they can make decisions based on that um, mm -hmm. instead of just being a quick reactionary um, and it's funny I love public speaking I love standing on stage I love sharing that when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversations with the soccer moms, I tell you, I feel like I'm shunned. I, no one talks to me. <laughs> I know. I, I, I don't know what they're thinking. I just stand there. I, they're talking about the most random, stupid stuff. And I'm going, I have nothing to say to you. Like, yeah. I almost don't want to be near you because I am afraid I'm, my face is going to talk for me and say, oh, my God, this is the dumbest conversation I've ever had. So I know yeah. my face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I can relate. In my town, a very affluent town, same thing. The soccer moms, the, the football. I've coached all their kids. And I'll show up and I'll just be like, right? Oh, hey. Right? Never have that, hey, let's gra let's go out for a beer kind of thing. You know, it, it's kind of weird. I can, I can relate to what you're saying. Um, good stuff, man. We're off to a great start. I love this. Um, the first question it is going to go to Nikki first. So you get this one. Uh, as a successful introvert, which everybody here, just so everybody knows who's listening, everybody that's on this call is very successful, right? They're introverts. And the whole reason we're doing this is for other people to realize, hey, it's okay. It's okay to be an introvert or we're going to pick up on some tips and things like that that are going to help you. And even if you're an ambivert, which is in between the two, that's going to help. Uh, even with extroverts, you can pick up on some things. But Nikki, as a successful introvert, how do, you, how do you best connect with people? You connect with a lot of people. You have a heck of a business going down there in Boca Raton. How do you best connect with people? So I just like connecting people in general, but again, in small groups. I like being one-on-one -on -one with people who have something to say. I'm kind of like Cece. I have a really hard time um, having just your basic 
how's the weather conversation. It has to be, there has to be more depth to it. Um, but I'm constant, when I'm in conversation with people, I'm constantly listening to what they have to say and thinking about who I can connect them with. Mm -hmm. um, that's just one of my passions is bringing people together. So small groups, I do really well in large groups. My friends actually have coined the term shady bounce. They're like, where's Nikki? Oh, she's shady bounced because I just disappear. If mm -hmm. I'm in big groups of people, you'll just won't see me because I'll disappear. That's me too. <laughs> hey, I'm going to the restroom. Be right back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even say that. I just like could be mid conversation. I don't do it intentionally, but I sometimes just walk away. I, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. It's something I'm working on. Yep. And, and let me ask you a question because I know a little bit about your business. You've got the, the beautiful group down there. Do you find that you're able to, through the Facebook community group that you have, uh, you're able to reach people that way and that allows you to then have that one-on-one? -on -one? So a lot of my conversations are through Messenger. So mm -hmm. again, I don't have to be in front of them. So I can, I feel like I can be a lot more open when I'm behind the screen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, because, because I'm an introvert. So having those conversations privately um, can open up a lot. But then when I have my events, I do, my heart starts pounding. I have palpitations that I have to be around a lot of people. I feel very uncomfortable, but I'm also into a lot of growth. So being uncomfortable um, is a good thing because you don't grow if you're not uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I've been working really hard to be around bigger groups of people so I can um, get used to that. Yeah, it's funny, this thing that I'm growing, I, I'm telling my partner all the time, I'm like, oh, I'm not it. I know you're not it. We, we need somebody to be that person, right? That person that's out there, bubbly, that, that high, high eye and stuff, and I just can't do it. Um, same question, CC, to you, and then we'll go to Brittany with the same question. Uh, as a successful introvert, how do you best connect with people? Uh, I think for, for me, it's business to business. Um, because, you know, like we're all saying, those high-minded conversations, you want to keep the conversations to a high level. I love business conversations. Yeah. Um, I don't understand, like, the small talk and the personal conversations because I view my personal life completely different. I raise my kids completely different than a lot of people. So I, I'm always looking for funnels. That to me is the most fun thing is I love creating funnels and not just person to person connections like business to business partnership funnels for each other. Um, so that we're supporting each other and there's always, you know, business to go around for each other. Um, mm -hmm. I, I believe that partnerships are going to save anyone's business because it's not external. You're creating your own internal market for your business. So the more partnerships, strategic partnerships that you have, you know, the, the better insulated off you are for, for everyone. So yeah, I just, I love being that business connector. Yeah. I, and you know, Nikki's the connector too, right? And you're talking about connecting and I love B2B versus B2C per se, because you're all on that same wavelength already. Oh, that, that was a beautiful answer. I loved it. Uh, Britt, how about you? I probably, um, I guess merge the two. I am a big internet lead person. And the more I listen to y'all think, I can understand now why it's so, I'm so comfortable on the internet because I can be, hey, this is Brittany, customer service Brittany. Uh, my team is watching. They're going to die laughing when they hear that because that is not real life Brittany. <laughs> but I can be all of those um, different things. What I have done, um, John, you just said, you and your partner were these people I've actually been able to leverage. And one of my agents, Kayla is the, the people person. Like she says it all the time. Brittany tells me go people because yeah. Brittany prefers not to talk to anybody because sometimes I think I'm so blunt because if you don't know what to say and you're also a high D personality and you're an extrovert and introvert, you just rip band-aids off. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, this is what I think. And it's like, Oh no, I didn't mean that. Like, uh, ding, don't it. That's how you took that. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of issues um, with that, which means I've sort of um, probably gotten a lot into a shell and have not come out. I'm trying this year to be more social, mm. but I don't even mm -hmm. like when people say, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I sell houses. <laughs> 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 so I'm not that kind of 
that, that doesn't work for me anymore. I, I prefer to be in the background. I really don't like being front and center anymore. Um, I, I, I would say that I probably hide behind my team. Most people in the area don't realize I even have a team and how many agents are on the team because uh, you know it, it became unimportant for me to talk about. So. Yeah. I just kind of stopped talking. <laughs> I, I just show up and hang out and then leave. What, is, what exactly do you do? No. <laughs> <laughs> right? You need that question. I know, and you'll probably hear like a very funny version because I'm like the happiest drinker ever. I'll tell you everything when I'm happy, but in real life, it's like. <laughs> well, I think what Cece was saying about, again, about the being around the people who you have a difficult time, challenging time having conversations, as a high D, um, we tend to be really direct. And so it's difficult to, and people get offended by that. Right. And so that's one of the reasons also why I'm introverted, because unless you want to hear the truth, you're probably not going to want to have a conversation with me. Right. Amen, so sister. People don't want right. to hear the truth, so. Mm -hmm. No, they want to have that idle chit chat and, yeah. and just yeah. spin around and round. And, you know, I'm going to even go a step further as somebody that's a little bit aware, right? Because uh, you and I talk a lot. A um, he, he, sometimes that truth is coming at you at 100 miles an hour and people just don't know how to get, they don't know how to handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And it's so cool, like you as extroverted introverts or introverts in general, we have to have such a cool core group of friends mm -hmm. where we can just be us, right? Um, yeah. friends, I've been like really sick the last, I think this is the ninth or 10th day of this, whatever mm -hmm. this is. And one of my friends had to tell me, Brittany, you don't have to be so perfect all the time because my persona, especially on social media is everything's perfect, everything's great, you, you know, so, yes, I'm raw, but the rawness people see is still a filtered version of me. And she was like, Brittany, you got to stop this. You know, it's okay to take a break. And I'm like, what is that? No, Brittany doesn't take breaks. She calls this deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm like over here now. Like the reason you see me shifting is because my stomach's killing me. So I'm like dancing. I'm doing my little. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll get you off quick. Don't you worry about that. I'm going to merge these next two questions in because we kind of touched a little bit on it. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to read them both. Cece's going to start because I don't think she got to go first yet. Is going to public events difficult? If so, how do you handle it? But slash, how do you protect yourself from the energy that you know will drain you, right? So that could be a public mm -hmm. event or it could be, you know, people are always looking to take, 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 right? And I don't, I'm a very giving person, but I'm also very aware and protective of the energy that I allow around me because I know that it can it have an impact on me. How do you best protect yourself and, you know, go into those public events or anything in public? How do, how do you best protect yourself from that? Um, well, first, I protect myself with my immunity. Number one, if you're going to these big events, as I don't know if this is an introvert or just a germaphobe, me, um, I have a fear of people not being clean, uh, not taking care of themselves. So these public events, if there's any anxiety around it, it is their, you know, their, um, their breast. <laughs> things but um they have commission breath <laughs> yeah it's, it is the well and you know that goes to elevators right the the need for people to shove themselves to fill an elevator and pack it full like why in the world would you all want to inhale each other's air um i i don't understand it like they shove them in there so i take the stairs a lot you know that that helps me um i get on the first floor this is a little bit of an event pro tip I'm on the first floor, so I don't have to stop every level. I take stairs when I can. Um, and as far as the people, I think you're being really, um, really purposeful with which don't go to every single event with all the people in the swarm that be purposeful of the ones that pertain to you, the two things you want to take away from the event. And then you have those small purposeful group meetings, you know, like they're already planned ahead. I know who I'm meeting. Um, and then I will actually, cause I like people to come to me, I will pick a spot and say, I'm here. And then if there is time that's needed, you come to me so that way. I'm not draining my energy, darting off to multiple places for meetings. It's like, if it's that important, we'll meet here in this time for an hour and then I'm done. I'm, I'm back at the hotel. 
Yeah, I got you. I was I was in New York for Inman last week, and it was four o'clock. I was in my bed watching Billions on Amazon Prime, and I was in Times yeah. Square's right out my window, and I'm just like, "What time do we got to be at that party? Seven thirty? All right, <laughs> I'm just gonna yep, hang yep. out right yep. here." <laughs> <laughs> um, Brittany, how about you? How, how do you how do you protect your energy and and, and stuff like that? And so that it, I'm lucky in that I know a lot of people around the country. I really don't do much here. Um, I'm getting better at that. I've actually shout out to one of my title company reps. She actually can pull me out of my house. Mm -hmm. um, but around the country, I'll usually find like if I saw CC or Nikki, I, I just kind of latch on to them. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Where are we going mm -hmm. next? You mean you're going to the bathroom? What time are we leaving? <laughs> um, I once went, I famously went to KW Family Reunion when I was at KW. There were so many people. I thought I was going, I, I, I was with Tristan and Kevin Markarian. I literally latched on to Tristan for him because I would not leave his side. I was scared. People kept talking to me and I was like, do I, why are there so many people? Like, where do I go next? Where's the bathroom? Where's this? You know, I don't know. Where's the exit sign? <laughs> like, where's my chair? Is that my yes. chair? Or is, is the other one my chair? So I tend to freak out. I prefer smaller events. I, you usually won't see me over about a 500 person event. I just don't go because I can't because I'm crazy. So, mm -hmm. But you're aware. Me on an airplane that's full. Let me just mm -hmm. say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, how about you? I, we know that you, what'd you call it? Shadow darting? Bounce. A shady bounce. Shady bounce. Um, <laughs> so I just don't... Um, I just learned a long time ago that I won't go somewhere if I don't want to. And if, mm -hmm. the, if I know there's going to be masses of people, I just won't go because I know I won't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and if I do have to be somewhere for whatever reason, I literally put a force field on to protect my energy before I go in. I put a force field over me and I, um, I think a lot to myself when I'm talking to somebody so I probably have a blank face all the time and I'm thinking in my head, that's an interesting point of view that he or she has that point of view. Interesting point mm -hmm. of view. So I'm constantly um, distracting myself from allowing my energy to get sucked in. Mm -hmm. But again, I just won't go somewhere if I, if, there's, if I know there are going to be hundreds of people, it's not likely I'll be there or I'll be like Brittany and I'll hold on to one person and be like, okay, it's time to go. We've got to go. Yeah. Or I'll just leave. And I like, people probably think I'm an alcoholic because I'm like, I need, can I have a glass of wine? Yeah, I don't drink, so that makes it even worse. So there you go. Yeah. And I know me and my infamous double fisting, right? Yeah. And, you know, it took me a long time to realize that whole energy thing. And it, it is right. And the more that I learn about it, the more that I study about it, I can actually see the energy now. And it's just like, maybe that's, a, maybe I'm going insane. I don't know. That's possible but i can actually see the energies and everything and it's like i need to go over this way uh, and just going to avoid that whole situation right. um you know there's going to go off script a little bit um nikki you mentioned high d which is the disc assessment what uh, what else are you your high d anything else i have a little bit of i and me okay That's about it <laughs> <laughs> so you're off the chart d yeah yeah i'm i'm uh a very high like 99 d so. yeah i think i was like 98 d yeah. <laughs> um cc how about you um so and i hope everyone knows like you should reevaluate your disc every so often because sure. as you grow your personality you got that adaptive change so when i started in real estate i was a 99.99 di and like a two and a four se i had nothing now as i'm growing the team and I've had to adapt. I'm now a DIC. So I always tell people, I'm like, I really, <laughs> I really am a DIC. <laughs> no kidding. Excellent. <laughs> and Britt, how about you? Uh, 99D, 99I, but she's right about the C. I find that if I feel like I'm losing control, I start making a lot of checklists. So mm -hmm. my D is actually, I think, a little bit lower than it used to be. And so is my I. My C has increased a lot. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, we definitely need to reevaluate uh, often. I, I do it once a year. Uh, all right. First, qu this is going to Britt first. What do you do to recharge, inspire, motivate yourself? Because you're giving it, you're giving a lot to people, right? You got team members and stuff. You're giving a lot. I often will say who motivates the motivator. And, um, 
Now, what do you do to recharge, inspire, motivate? Um, I read a lot. Okay. I, I enjoy reading. I probably, I don't smoke anymore. I used to do that. Well, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, drink wine, but I normally, I'm so like, <laughs> I told you that, in the comments. <laughs> What do you do to recharge? Smoke a cigarette. <laughs> but no, um, I'm, I'm, I have very high goals this year for us as a team, so I'm laser focused on that. Um, I, we're, I'm supposed to go to the beach on a vacation. That might be nice, but mostly I've just been really lucky in that my group of friends that are my friends that truly know me, not the fake persona of Brittany or whoever I pretend to be on TV, um, the people who really know me, I can make a phone call and, and just literally just vomit all over them. They can take it and say, okay, are we done? You need to breathe. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, have you tr thought about this or have you done this this way? I mean, uh, this, within the last quarter of last year and the first quarter of this year, I have been hit with so much crap that, you know, on the personal side, on the family side, now, of course, it's a health side that it's just like, look, <laughs> like I did you, I need you. Universe, this is not what I told you to give me. So um, it's going to work like Yeah, uh, that sounds good to me. Um, Cece, how about you? What do you do to recharge, inspire, or motivate yourself? Um, I, well, a lot of things. One, I don't wake up early. I don't put any stress on myself mm -hmm. to be what all the top CEOs do. I mean, power to you, you 4 a.m.ers. Power. Thank God, you. you. Thank I you mean, for saying that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm a late night owl. So Me too. I am up to 1130. I typically wake up around seven, six forty-five, seven to get ready. Yeah. And I, I really saw stress to me. Everything is good. Um, whatever happens comes my way. It's, it's a good thing. People leave my team. If it's good for them, it's good for me. If it, you know, if there's a pivot in my business, well, then there's something for me to learn from it. It's just that that mindset of I release all the stressful, I just try to get myself stressed out. And you know, when I'm at home alone, I'm going to binge watch on Gilmore girls. I said it. <laughs> I like it. That's Friend, your thing. Rock anything, on. I mean, whatever it is, I, I'm going to sit at home and, and watch TV. I love it. Mm -hmm. Good. What about you, Nikki? What do you do to recharge, inspire, or motivate yourself? I usually disappear somewhere into the nature, into nature mm -hmm. and journal and I meditate and I allow as well. Like CC was saying, I just allow whatever's going to happen, happen. There's no point in stressing over anything because ultimately everything gets out of our control. So yeah. just going with the flow and allowing what happens, meditating, um, being in nature, being with my kiddos. Yeah. Yeah, and that that's a lot of, with me. I like to go for walks. Uh, we got a beautiful place. I call it Meditation Rock. You hike up there, and I can just hang out up there overlooking the lake. It's beautiful. I, really getting back to nature uh, can do wonders. And I play with a pit bull named Mo, and I have two cats. And I just – I actually stop and look at just the wonder, just the beauty grateful, of – right? Like when you're grateful, that's yeah. the highest vibration. It, it is. And when I can sit there and just look at the beauty of my cat's fur or them cleaning themselves or their little per and I just sit there and I can watch that. It could be five minutes. It could be. I enjoy 20. watching your cats clean themselves. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what I mean? That's like, well, yeah. I'm all, when they get down to their nether regions, no, they got to go. <laughs> but just, just to watch, you know, that kind of natural, just take time and, you know, it took a lot for me to realize the saying, stop and smell the roses. But really, when you do stop and literally smell the roses and look at the flower and watch the bumblebee, people have bumblebees or bees fly around them and they stop freaking out. And I'm just like, just don't bother it. It ain't going to bother you. And um, just stay calm. I've never had a bee sting me when I was calm. You know, did have one sting me on my motorcycle once. That wasn't fun. All right, we're getting to the end here. Cece, you go first. Give us a piece of advice that can help somebody out there that might be struggling because this really, it, it is a people business, right? We got to be belly to belly with people. Uh, we got to have conversations with people. We can't hide, right? We can't show up with our masks on saying, 
hi, bye. You know, I want to sell you a house, but don't talk to me. We just can't do that. We, we got to have those conversations with people and be belly to belly with them. So what's a piece of advice you can um, give somebody uh, who might be struggling in, in this particular area? Um, something, and not, this may be, it come natural. If not, I would say be a master of bringing people to you. Um, so if you know that you are not the person to, everyone says, oh, just be a great networker, go networker. Um, and you're struggling with, well, I won't know what to say and all that stuff. And there's Toastmasters and things like that. But for me personally, I have found that I can be a master of bringing people to me. And that is either hosting a seminar, right? There's home buyer seminars. We've hosted probate mm -hmm. seminars. We do pop-up events. I'm a master of putting, bringing the people to me so that they have to initiate that conversation and I'm the, the source of education so that I'm able to talk on topics that I am passionate about, that I'm educated about, I'm seen as the expert and it's little effort on my part because I'm not going to them. I found the absolute highest and best way to bring the most people to me in the shortest amount of time. Um, and then that, that helps you as an introvert because it's, you know, an hour, hour and a half and you're done. Mm -hmm. And you get to stay busy being the organizer, right? You don't have to stop and have that conversation like everybody else. Yes. That's awesome. Do you use, do you use strictly Facebook to do that? Or do you use the meetup app or anything? Um, strictly Facebook. A lot of our, you know, ways to get people there, but it's Facebook and how you use it. I mean, it's boosting. It's also the swip swaps, mm -hmm. the local groups. It's getting involved and letting the community know where you're going to be so mm -hmm. that they can come to you on their time. So you attract. Yes. All Be right. Master. Yep. Nikki, how about you? Um, I don't know if I'm going to answer the question correctly, but for me, I think um, it's about asking people questions because people like to talk about themselves mm -hmm. and it's, it's more comfortable for an introvert to come from curiosity as opposed to talk about themselves in, in my experience. Mm -hmm. um, so just, you know, buy books on like fierce conversations, great, great book, buy books on asking questions and um, also become an expert in your field. If you're not already, sometimes introverts don't feel comfortable talking about uh, the, the subject at hand. So if you can really dig in and educate yourself, um, you'll feel more confident about talking to people and maybe... Mm -hmm come out of your shell and be comfortable being uncomfortable because that's where the growth really happens. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. We've all heard it. We all know it. You got to come out of your comfort zone, right? So if you're coming out of that comfort zone, control it your way. All right, Brett, how about you close it up? I would say be a helper. Okay. So it's kind of merging what they said together. I like to help people. If somebody is on Facebook saying, they need a jacket for their kid or somebody to monogram something. Um, I'm always trying to help them. Uh, that's probably all I got. I feel like if you help enough people get what they want, like Zig Zig, <coughs> you do too. Um, and that's probably my biggest thing. I don't really care to do home buying seminars. I don't, I don't like to speak anymore. So I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Right. They do what you like to do. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of this whole comical thing we call life right um do what you like to do and you never work in your life right. i want to just say this in closing is there is everything that we just talked about you can do you can do online we talk about in the marketing realm how important video is and all this other stuff nikki was talking about how uh you know she and Brittany even said it and see everybody said it when their posts we're, we're putting out what the image, what we want to be. Maybe that's an alter reality. I don't know. But you're able to control that. We just talked about how we like helping people. I like to create events. I like to do this, that, the other thing. You can do all this on Facebook. You, you just got to think and start to plan this stuff up. Think of it. I see, I see the good stuff that uh, Nikki does with, with, with Nikki. Sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, but I've seen you uh, on Sundays feeding the, the homeless or the less fortunate in the park, right? Uh, you can do these things. I got a friend, uh, Scott, up in uh, Delaware. Every year he does a food drive and he does it with, and leverage, leverage the people that you know. He does a food drive with a moving company. They supply the boxes. They, they, they donate like hundreds of pounds of food every year. 
Uh, I know people that do sock drives and coat drives. Do something that you like to do, whatever that is. Something that you're passionate about. Be the coordinator or the second in charge and have somebody help you to be the coordinator, right? And you can bring it together and then you can make some videos about different things around that realm. I'm not saying make a full on video. We do the charity because we want to, but we also want to push the message so we can get more people involved. It's really easy as an um, introvert to get involved in projects, get involved with other people, small groups and impact, make an impact. And, you know, my hope is that everybody listening to this can pick up an idea or two from whatever we shared um, and, and do something with it. Right. Take that introversion, take that safe space, make a video and put it out there. Don't worry. If you're shy, you're shy. You're not an introvert. Right. So you're shy. You got to find ways to get over the shyness. Uh, if you're an introvert, find ways that you can get your message out there, help people and such in, in a way that you want to be in that safe place. And like everybody here has said, when the light switch switches, it's go time. And when the light switch switches off, jump back in the bed and put on the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. So, ladies, anything, anything final as we close this out? I think just, can I just add, because I do a lot of Facebook stuff, Facebook mm -hmm. groups, so um, what, what you were saying resonated with me about being the leader that brings people together, because I think a lot of people are looking for somebody to do that. So with my Facebook group, um, we give other people the opportunity to give back, and they wouldn't necessarily do that if we weren't there to facilitate it. So, mm -hmm. you know, as agents, as realtors, as leaders, it's really... I feel like it's my responsibility to step up and help people give back to their community because they would they might not necessarily know how to do it or be prompted to do it if, if we didn't give them that platform. Perfectly well said. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Anybody else? Go once, going twice. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Hope you picked up something. Uh, post a question. Do something. Do something good. Do something for yourself. Peace out.